just want to know so we know how much food to get. And um, I'm excited. Change is coming to Prince William County, we're pretty sure. And uh, I know everybody here is going to make it. So. Commitment, integrity, and I am energized. I am Ryan Fields, and I am your candidate for sheriff of Prince William County. I bring to you 15 years of law enforcement experience. I also bring to you that I am a combat veteran. I am a current member of the Virginia Army National Guard, where I serve a role as staff sergeant. <coughs> I am also a sitting council member. I was elected to that position in 2016, and I still serve. My military background as an Iraqi war veteran, my experience as a deputy sheriff, police officer that's worked the street and the jail, qualifies me for making decisions in this county as sheriff. My work as an elected official puts me in contact with other elected officials and government officials across this county and across the state. That prepares me also for the position of sheriff. I have aggressive vision for the future of the sheriff's office. I bring to you the compassion that is necessary to be the sheriff. I also bring to you the passion of working in the community. I understand the problems that we have here in Prince William County. Number one, the 287G referendum. It has got to go. Number two, gangs. We can do something about that. Safer communities. We have a growing homelessness problem. Let's go over to Dale City and you can see it for yourself. Back to the 287G bill. I know it. I live it. I experience it. My wife is from Honduras. And I've gone over my two minutes already. <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I raised a child that has come through that pipeline that you see there at the border. I've been to the border to help our family members. I know, I feel what it's like. I will not let you down. I am your number one candidate to beat a Republican sheriff that holds the office down. We can do it. Thank you. Hello friends, it's exciting to be in front of Prince, Prince William Democrats again. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dan Homer. I'm married to Karen, a public school teacher in Fairfax County where our two boys go to school. I'm the son of immigrants and the grandson of refugees and wanted to serve my country, so I went to West Point, did tours in Iraq and Afghanistan, earned a Rhodes Scholarship along the way, and now help run a small business here in Northern Virginia. Now, when I was in the Army, we didn't have the luxury of asking the person sitting next to us in the Humvee, are you a Republican, are you a Democrat, are you an independent? He asked, how do you serve your country? How do you get the mission done? How do you bring folks on stage? You know why? Because that's what service is all about. And it's that spirit of service that's been missing in our representation here in Virginia's 48th House of Delegate District, where two all narrow partisan interests have taken the place of common sense gun laws that serve every Virginian, no matter the color of their skin, where they're from, or whom they love, and keep our community livable and safe. My friend Rob has a son with severe disease who spends tens of thousands of dollars out of his own pocket to take care of his work. And our delegate votes against Medicaid expansion that's not service, and it's time for a change. I'm ready to go to Richmond and fight so that teachers like my wife, Karen, have the resources they need to prepare our students for a 21st century workforce. I'm ready to go to Richmond and fight so that we spend more time at home with our families and less time in traffic. I'm ready to go to Richmond and fight so that the women I serve beside in Iraq and Afghanistan are protected under our Constitution with equal rights and finally become the 38th state to ratify the ERA. Because that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. A 
hope you come. We have a signature launch at our office this uh, Saturday at noon. Love to see you there. And uh, for those of you who aren't in the district, Hugo's got $250,000. We'd love to have your help there, too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Hassan Ahmed. I introduced myself before. I'm an immigration attorney. We started this uh, meeting with a moment of silence for the uh, terror that's been inflicted on immigrant children. I have been fighting for them for the past 15 years of my practice. I met a child once when I was doing some volunteer work at the South Texas Family Residential Center, which is a fancy way of saying baby jail. What was on this fourth grade child's mind? The reason why he was had, had to go, uh, be taken out of school was because the fifth and sixth graders were asking him whether he was going to join MS-13 or Barrio 18. What parent is going to send their child into an environment like that? These are the children that are coming in to the United States, and our laws here in Virginia do not help them. This is but one example of things that we can change to make Virginia a state that welcomes and works for everyone. I was one of the volunteer lawyers that showed up at the airport uh, when the, the, the travel ban hit in January of 2017. I had to go there. I was an immigration attorney. I was 10 minutes away from my home. I've lived in Sterling for 12 years. I had to be there. But hundreds of people, many like yourselves, showed up as well. They didn't have clients or family members that were going to get banned by this hateful ban. But they showed up anyway because they understood that this is not who we are as Americans. This is not who we are as Virginians. That same fighting spirit, they were the real heroes that night. And I was inspired by their actions, and I shifted the course of my entire practice of law and implemented advocacy as part of my baseline representation of my clients. I walked into Dallas Airport that night as a lawyer, I walked out as an advocate, and today I'm a candidate. Because I know that this is the place, right in my own backyard, where we can make that change to make Virginia a, a, a state that welcomes and works for everyone. Our kickoff is this Sunday, I invite you to visit our website, passingforva.com, and please, your support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Greg and I work for Josh. Um, I want to apologize on his behalf. 20 minutes before this meeting, he had a family medical emergency and couldn't show up. Um, so I wanted to keep his family good thoughts, but he just wanted me to come to see him on his behalf. Um, and so I thought, you know, I'd come up here, say his platform, say why he's running. But then I decided that I'd want to talk to him about why I'm supporting Josh, why I'm working for him. You know, when I got the call that he was looking to hire, um, the first thing he talked about was that he wanted to train a new generation of law enforcement officers, because it's a lifetime job to be able to support communities that aren't being supported right now by law enforcement. That means the LGBTQ community. As an openly gay man, I'm afraid of the cops. I'm afraid of the sheriff's department because I don't feel like my community is being supported by them. You know, communities um, of color, immigrant communities, communities with disability. Um, his daughter's a uh, 15 year old with autism and she doesn't know how to handle, um, you know, when she's in school, the police officers don't know how to handle uh, fire drills, don't know how to handle, um, you know, lockdowns, things like that with these special needs students. And, you know, thankfully the only, at this point, they're drills, they're not actual scenarios. And that's the feel that he has as a parent, is what's gonna happen when there's an active shooting in his daughter's school, and the police officers don't know how to handle students with disabilities, don't know how to handle, um, you know, making sure these students are safe and in safe environments. And so that's why he decided to run, um, one of the reasons, and that's why I decided to support him, because I realized, that we need law enforcement officers who are willing to not just ignore the LGBTQ student who's being bullied by um, his peers, not ignore the trans person who's being shoved out of a bathroom because of people don't understand their gender identity. And that happens right here and there. That happens in every community. And the Sheriff's Department is one of the bases where they can have an outreach to the community to help educate and learn and train. Um, and that is one of the reasons Josh is running one of his main platform things. Um, and that's why I decided to support him. Um, and one reason why we hope you all will support us. We just had our kickoff, um, but we're having events all throughout February and March, and we hope to see you there. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> For 
those of you who don't know me, my name is Joseph George, and I am the Prince William County Democratic Committee Corresponding Secretary. Two of the things that our chairman wanted us to do is to grow the party and to get good Democrats elected. That has been one of my major goals as Corresponding Secretary, by ensuring that outside groups were aware of our events and we were aware of theirs. Transition to this next step, I am looking to become the Neasco School Board Representative for the 2019 uh, election series. <laughs> one thing I plan on doing, everything goes back to the child. We have to make sure that our children are being properly educated. The moniker of world-class education is not necessarily being taken care of in my United Spirit District. Our teachers have to be properly compensated, and they have to be respected. They cannot be bullied, and they cannot be threatened based off of feelings or teaching ways. We need to provide them the flexibility to properly teach in their classroom, because they are the ones who know how these students learn. Thirdly, career technical education. Every parent wants their child to go to college, but we all know that not all students are going to be college ready when they graduate college. Career technical education will provide these students an opportunity to get a very well paying job as they get their diploma. Right now, Princeton County Schools touts their graduation rate to be higher than the state average. Unfortunately for my school, it is five percentage points lower than the state average. That is unacceptable. Please get in contact with me via Facebook. I'm sure that if you haven't received a Facebook message or an email from me, please reach out to me. I will appreciate your support. Thank you, Christina. Have a good day. <laughs>
to the board with her. And that's one of the most important things for me, for my representative, whether it's at the federal level, the school, school board level, or in Richmond. And so that's why I'm supporting her. She's an advocate and nonprofit founder whose true passion is serving others. After coming out of severe poverty, she understands the importance of reaching back and helping others. And she will take these experiences with her to the Board of Supervisors. And she strongly believes that until all of us are okay, none of us are okay. And to LT, this pans out in three different areas. One is education, which is important to me as well because I have three children in the system. She wants to make sure our teachers are paid and that we have no more trailers. Two, she wants to make sure we're bringing good jobs to this area and to the Coles District. And three, she wants to make sure that we have good transportation throughout the county, in and out, east, west, north, and south. And that can be looked at in terms of expanding the VRE or making sure we have better buses to get us around town. And as I said, hearing directly from the voters is important for LT. I recently hosted a coffee and conversation event for her at my house, and we had 12 to 15 people come over and just have a conversation with LT about what is important in Cold and in Prince William County, and we received some really valuable ideas from them. And for LT, this campaign is about all of us and the shared belief that as a district and as a county, we are better when we work together. And so she wants to make sure that she's not just speaking the right words, but taking the right action within the community and as your representative as the Coles Board of Supervisors. And so she needs her help, your help. As a former candidate, I know how much she needs your help, whether it's knocking doors, writing postcards, making phone calls, and yes, donations. Please visit her website, pigeonforcoles.com, and sign up to be a volunteer or to host your own coffee and conversation event. Thank you. Hello, good evening. My name is Grace Slitner. I'm, I'm in the Coles District, and I'm here tonight for Lisa Zarbor, who is running for school board for the Coles District. She couldn't be here tonight because she's a music teacher, and there's a choral concert tonight with her students. Um, I've known Lisa for several years. Our daughters went to school together. Lisa is a graduate of, a of, of, of Osborne Park High School in Prince William County. Uh, she has three children that are Prince William County, well, two of them. Well, they're all her students at Prince William County Schools. Lisa has four, at least four major goals. One is child advocacy, it's her main thing. She's very good with children. And she is a mentor teacher, which means she's equity lead, which means she ensures students in her building get what they need. And her next thing is safety, and she says uh, student safety, not just buildings and guidance counselors, but also to make our schools and communities safer. And uh, she wants smaller classes, like most people and she wants to raise salaries of teachers. She is a music teacher in Fairfax County, even though she lives in Coles District. She would like to be a teacher in Prince William, but the salaries, I think she said, are about 10,000 more for her in Fairfax, so she wants to lower the salaries. She, and a lot of people know Lisa, she has a passion and drive, and gets along very well with all types of people. But, uh, she has a website, I think it's called Lisa for uh, Coles Board. Anyway, uh, She'll need your support, with, even if you're not in her district. She'll need donations. She'll need people to get the word out. And she'll need canvasser, canvassers when she wins the primaries. So this is our report, again, for Coles District School Board.
not least. I am, for those who don't know, I am Mark Wolf. I am a three-time, three, that's three, right, three, two, it, you run. I am a three-time representative of Manassas City Council, the Free Republic of Manassas. I am not here to announce this thing political. My birthday is coming. <laughs> February 8th, 5 o'clock in Oakland. I can think of nothing better than to have a room full of energized Democrats eating free food. And maybe, now, there might be a political announcement that's made at that time. You'll have to turn out in time. February 8th, Oakland's at 5 o'clock. Right, you'll even be there? All right, thank you all very much.